Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, Say What's Real TV. This review is for Tyler Perry's Sisters, Season 7, Episode 17, Taste of Freedom. So we open up the episode with Jordan drooling all over the sofa, finally waking up after drinking that tainted drink that Ethan gave him before he passed out. So he's trying to get his bearings when Andy, she comes in, worried, sick because she couldn't get a hold of him, come to find out his phone was dead. So he's telling her that he had too much to drink. He doesn't even know how many drinks. So she tells him that she knows he's probably going into panic mode and he should just really think positive when it comes to the whole Penelope situation. And he says that's easier said than done. She gives him some medication from her purse and some water. I'm like, girl, give him two BCs and a ginger ale. It'll kick in a lot quicker. So in an attempt to try to make him feel better, she said she'll come back over later cook him something like some candles and then they can get into some things. She told him to go take a shower, hydrate and rejuvenate. And of course he says, I love you. And she doesn't say it back. She scurries out the door. So we go over there to Gary's office and this is where we learn that Ethan had to put something in Jordan's drink, get him passed out so he can get some incriminating photos against him. So while Gary is looking at the pictures, we see male prostitutes, female prostitutes. Jordan is in the picture passed out. It's given like a sex scandal again, okay? Gary is loving the pictures. He's actually excited. He's ecstatic. He's acting like a kid in the candy store. He wants to know were there any cameras in the house. And we learn also that Jordan has absolutely no cameras. Like, dumb, 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 dumb. But anyway, Gary, you know, he's calling Hudson in because these pictures are gold in his words. And he's loving it. And he can't believe it. Ethan asked him, what are you planning on doing with the pictures? And Gary tells him he is going to ruin Jordan's life. And then Ethan, he kind of sides eye Gary a little bit. Then he looks at Hudson and Hudson looks at him. And I'm like, mm, what's up with that? So we head over there to the bank and we see Sabrina and Maurice not doing a lick of work. But she asked Maurice how him and Grayson are doing. And Maurice lets her know that they're barely hanging on. He tells her that he's trying to get used to the whole move-in thing and he's really feeling smothered. So while they're talking, in walks Rich with some smoothies and of course, Maurice has something slick to say talking about, oh, am I not cute enough to get any of your juices? And he walks off. Now Rich, he wants to go in the office to talk and we know when these men get to these girls' job, all they want to do is go in the office somewhere so they can hunch. And Sabrina was like, no, sir, not today. So Rich says he's there to apologize and the only reason he asked about the birth control was because he didn't understand how the fertility process worked and Sabrina called him out and said no you thought I was trying to trap you he claims he didn't say that but you did sir you went over there to Jordan's house in front of your homeboys and said it and they had to check you to let you know that Sabrina wasn't that type of girl so no you didn't say it to her face but it's been all up and through your mind that's why you wanted hot sauce for your condom remember that so Sabrina tells him that they should probably put things on hold for a little while and he automatically tells her that he loves her and that they don't need to break up behind this and I beg to differ because when they sat in the juice bar, I said both of them should have stood on business on what they both wanted for their futures. You didn't want kids, she wanted kids. Automatically, you should have broken up then. So she tells him no, not necessarily breaking up, but no more sex and he almost have a heart attack. And he can't believe it. He's like, well, can I at least kiss you down there? Because you know you like that. And she says, no, the kitty is closed. And Maurice, he in the background shooing away customers so he can get all the tea. And he tells Rich, she said what she said and beat it, Baldy. <laughs> So over there at the law firm, Fatima notices Hayden is bringing Miss Marie to work with him and she stands back in the cut peeping game. But Hayden and Miss Marie are like they don't have a care in the world. They touchy-feely and skinning and grinning and he's like, go ahead and wait on the inside. And she was like, well, don't keep mama waiting. I got a hair appointment because we sweated it out. I'm like, oh my. So Fatima, she felt the need to confront Hayden and ask him what he's up to. And his excuse was he was escorting a client to a meeting. What did she think he was doing? She called him a creepy, slimy, desperate lawyer who was mixing business with pleasure and doing anything for a win, which was facts. But hey, it is what it is. It's a dirty game out here in these streets. So he accused her of still wanting his D. She said she didn't want the pencil D. And if they were on some deserted island, she'd rather be eaten up by a shark. Now, even though Fatima just bruised his little ego, whatever Hayden is working with, Miss Marie is definitely pleased and satisfied. And as the old saying goes, there's a lid for every pot. 
So Fatima, she quickly calls Andy to find out where she is and she gives her the rundown on Hayden bringing Miss Marie in to work with him and how he's up to something. Andy vows that as soon as she makes partner, Hayden will be the first to go and she tells Fatima she'll see her soon. So we head over there to the airport and Tony, he approaches Danny basically to let her know that he'll see her a little later on that evening because he was going out to eat with the kids and their mom. And Danny felt some kind of way like, oh, okay, so what's up with that? And he tries to explain to her that they're trying to put up a united front for the kids because the divorce was hard on them and they want to show that they could still be a family. And Danny was like, well, you know, I'm familiar with you, like take me. And he says that Tiffany just wants it to be the four of them so Danny was like, of course she does. Like, are you sure she's not trying to get back with you and get her family back? So Tony claims it's not like that. And Tiffany has a significant other in her life and that Danny has nothing to worry about. So Tony he tries to reassure Danny by letting her know he'll check in when he goes to the restaurant and when he's on his way to come see her. And all the while rubbing all on her while they're on the clock in front of the cameras, in front of the customers. Like, I'm just over all of that sexual stuff. Now he wants to go to the office to hunch and then tells her that she forgot that he was the VP and he has keys to different rooms that they can go and have sex in. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Danny, I'm going to need you to stop allowing Tony to use sex as a deflection. And I'm surprised the two of you haven't gotten caught yet on the clock hunching. So we go back over there to Jordan's house and Ethan, he comes over there and they start talking about the campaign and emails and this and that and the other. Both of them looking exactly like the night before, same exact clothes. Apparently Jordan never went and took a bath, but I don't know what Ethan's angle was because clearly when he was in Gary's office earlier that day, he had on a whole different suit. So why would you go put the same blue suit back on? But I guess that's part of his strategy because he tells Jordan that he was oh so drunk that he woke up in the same clothes. But Jordan did get a few questions in. He wanted to know what time did Ethan leave? Did he walk him out? And Ethan told him he barely made it home because those drinks were so strong. So Jordan apologized for giving him the alcohol and he said no need to apologize. And then he gives him this little side eye. And I'm like, Jordan, please, if you ain't figured nothing out by now, your slow behind will never figure it out. So we go over there to the salon. Pam is at the desk when Trey comes in and he says that he's there to check in on her and wants to know what she's done with the business so far. So she gives him a little rundown on the things that she has already set up and that she also took his advice about the samples. So Trey says he wants a little more and he's willing to take a little deep dive. And she was like, ooh, you nasty, Trey. When all of a sudden Zach comes in wanting to know where Karen was at and Pam pretty much brushed him off like she over there somewhere like, go head on. <laughs> So Karen asked him what he was doing there. He said he was just there to drop in on her and she basically told him to make it quick. So he starts asking her, does she need anything? Is she all right? Has she started feeling the baby's kick yet? So then Karen fixes her lips to say that they are super active at night and that she would call him over to fill her belly, but she don't want to get cussed out by his bodyguard talking about Fatima. So he goes on to tell her that him and Aaron made amends and that they're cool now and he was hoping that her and Fatima can get on the same page as well. Now Karen tells Zach that maturity looks good on him but turns around and says that the ship has sailed when it comes to her and Fatima and basically kicks Zach out of her salon. <laughs> Now, I get what Zach was trying to do, but if Karen is not willing to at least bend a little bit and try to move forward, we want off the merry-go-round. We're tired and over this saga between Karen, Fatima, Zach, and Aaron. So we go over there to the law firm and Andy, she finally makes it to work and she's nervous. She doesn't know why Miss Marie is there. Her and Fatima are trying to figure it out as they watch Hayden and Miss Marie skinning and grinning over in the next office. So when she finally comes out, she's showing all 32. She's giving off that Patty LaBelle, that new attitude. So Andy, low key, trying to play it off like, why are you here? We can go discuss the case. And Miss Marie was telling her, if you had watched the news this morning, you would already know that my soon to be ex husband leaked some personal information to the press. And my nosy behind was waiting for them to say what the information was. Baby, so Andy, she tried to apologize. And Miss Marie was like, if you waiting for me to give a crap, pick a lunch. Andy was like, oh, so you don't care? Miss Marie said, I don't have the time or the crayons to explain it to you. I'm like, oh my, <laughs> not the crayons. That was a little shady. So 
So Hayden, he comes in there and Miss Marie tells him to give Andy the download on what went on. And they start kalaki lacking and kakikiing and rubbing and touching, just not hiding a thing. So once Miss Marie leaves, Andy confronts Hayden like, what's up with that? And he basically just told her to mind her business. So Hayden, he walked off smirking like he always does. And Fatima and Andy were trying to figure everything out. Fatima says the whole thing was giving her boomerang, Eartha Kid and Eddie Murphy vibes and vowed to find out what the two of them were talking about. So we see Maurice coming home from work. He's calling out Grayson's name and he is nowhere to be found. He calls Grayson and gets sent straight to voicemail and says that he's been blocked. But Maurice, you wanted space, so the man is giving you your space. Later on, we see Maurice go down to the club and meet up with Chris. And the two of them, they're chopping it up. And he's telling him everything that happened. And Chris told him, you better go get your man back. Otherwise, I'm going to give him some of this white chocolate, teasing him. So he tells Maurice, look, pull your girdle up and go get your man back. Next thing we know, we look over and Grayson is over there in the cut talking to some guy. So Maurice, he struts over there to go claim his piece and he gets to acting a whole donkey talking about, oh, this why you ignoring my calls? So he pushes the guy out of the way and tells him to get to moving. And then he asks Grayson again, oh, so this why you ignoring my calls? Over here with some bitty bitty bum bum bee. <laughs> So Grayson tells Maurice that that was his co-worker. Maurice was like, they hunched too. Now Grayson remaining nice and calm, trying not to cause a scene. I'm wondering, did he do it on purpose just to make Maurice jealous? But anyway, he does tell Maurice, look, it's not like that. And let me remind you that you were the one that wanted your space. So since he can't deny that he did tell him that, now he claims that he is too cute to be arguing after he stormed over there acting like a whole fool up in that place. And now saying that I don't want you no more, which we all know they'll be back together next week off camera, back like they never left. So we see Tony arriving to the restaurant to meet Tiffany and his kids. He's on the phone with Danny, calling her like he promised. So he goes and sit down already late because of traffic. So Tiffany took it upon herself to go ahead and order his drink for him. So Tiffany says that it's nice to have them all together again as a family. And of course, the kids are quite excited about it. So she talks about how Tony has been so busy that they haven't seen much of him lately. And I'm wondering, like, how much time has passed by since she actually showed up in his office back from the military? He tells her that he's been busy at work. And she said that it, she thought it had something to do with Fanny calling Danny Fanny Longthroat or whatever. So he spit his drink out when she said that and he told her stop playing. You know her name is Danny. So they go back down memory lane about some raggedy birthday cake and they kakikiing and kakakiing. Then Tiffany tries to play it off and be slicker than Rick by placing her hand all over Tony's. And he slightly and politely moves her hand. So then Brianna, she asks, why didn't Miss Danny come? And trifling Tiffany says that this is family time and Miss Fanny is not family. So Tony did check her and said, well, she's my girlfriend and she's family to me. So I'll give you a little point for that, Tony, okay? So then Tony brings up Danny watching the kids again. And I guess Tiffany was like, I got to think of something quick. So she suggests to Tony that he stays the night with her and the kids and they can watch movies like old time sakes and have the kids crawl up in the bed all between them. And again, I ask, how much time has passed? Like, are you still living at his mom's house? Because I thought you was just going over there to drop off some donuts and see the kids real quick. Like, I mean, are you stationed in Atlanta now? Are you living on base? Do you have a hotel room? Like, where y'all getting ready to have this slumber party at? But anyway, the kids are like, please, daddy, please. And Tony's sitting there looking like he don't know what to say or what to do. Like, he can't tell the kids no. So she's basically using the kids to reel him back in. So we get a phone call between Andy and Sabrina. Andy is over there cooking for Jordan. Sabrina, she just wants to talk about Rich and the whole situation about him thinking that she's trying to trap him and her cutting off sex. So Andy tells Sabrina that her and the girls have been talking and they have this one big question mark about Rich. Like, how is it going to work? You want kids and he doesn't. So now all of a sudden Sabrina's acting like she's having this revelation talking about this is the million dollar question. I'm like, girl, please, we've been telling you this from the gate. So we go over there to Zach and Fatima's and we get a cute scene with Fatima trying to read to Michael to put him to sleep, but it is not working. So Zach, he comes in bringing Fatima a glass of wine looking identical to the lamp that's on the end table. <laughs> Thank you.
So Zach, he's trying to hurry up and get Michael in bed because he wants to get some. And Fatima was like, not tonight. Like she has to get up early in the morning. Zach tells her, that's what you told me last night. So apparently they're not doing it as often. Plus, Michael has been sleeping in their bed. So after all of that, Zach tells Fatima that he went down to the salon to talk to Karen because for the sake of the kids, he wants the two of them to squash their beef. So Fatima tells him that she'll try and he's like, are you really going to try? Like, I really need y'all to do this. Now, Zach, you didn't give Karen any kind of pushback when she told you that the ship has sailed. You wanted to make a joke out of it, talking about you like yachts. So don't sit here and badger Fatima about it. She says she'll try and that basically means if Karen is cool, she's cool. If Karen wants to smoke, she wants to smoke. So Fatima tells him, make sure you let Karen know that because this goes both ways. And he says he's going to talk to Karen about it. And I'm not understanding why do we need 30,000 conversations. Let us off the merry-go-round, please. And thank you. So Zach's main concern right now is trying to get him a little bit. So he gets Michael to take him upstairs so he could try to put him to sleep. And tells Fatima, hurry up and drink that wine. Now, one thing I did notice, Michael don't like to go to sleep. So I wonder if that's going to be a problem for the new nanny who claims she is a stickler for that bedtime. She don't play about it. So we see Karen and she gets a phone call from Shauna, the building owner. And she slapped going off talking to Karen like she done lost her rabid mind. But she's telling her that her insurance has lapsed and she needs to get it together by the end of the week. She tells her she'll take care of it. She hangs up and immediately blames Pam. But all of a sudden over in the cut, she spots Trey in the dark with some female and she's like this mofo. She pulls her phone out and she gets to clicking like she is part of the paparazzi for TMZ. So we go back over there to Jordan's house and as promised, Andy has a meal waiting and ready for him. He is quite appreciative of it all because he claims he has not had a bite to eat since his sister went missing. So Andy tells him she has something to tell him but makes him play this little guessing game and finally says that she loves him. So then we see Gary taking it all in because he's listening to them through the bug that's on the picture frame and he is disgusted by the conversation. He is over there heated. So Jordan wanted to know could they do something different and Andy thought that meant something new in the bedroom. He said, can we pray? It caught her off guard, but she was like, of course. So Jordan, he starts praying. He's praying for him and Andy. He's blessing the food. He's asking for protection for him, Andy, his sister. And he's going deep in it and begging and pleading and pleading and begging. And Andy couldn't take it no more. The prayer was so powerful. She starts singing like a canary. This lady interrupts the prayer to tell him that Penelope is alive because she's seen her. And I'm like, damn, damn, damn. So Jordan looking at her like, what? She's like, oh, before you get mad, she's working with the FBI on this grand case to take Gary down. And I'm like, oh my God. So Jordan, he gets mad anyway, telling her she's been knowing all this time, watching him freak out and didn't say anything. So she was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to disclose the information. And it's just ass backwards. When she had all the time in the world to talk and tell everything that she knew, she didn't say a damn word. But when the FBI asked her, don't say anything, she promised Penelope she wouldn't say anything. She over here running her mouth. It makes absolutely no sense. So she also tells Jordan that the FBI wants her and Penelope to testify against Gary. He's sitting over there doing all this ear hustling. Now he knows everything and he is hotter than fish grease. And he says that she done effed up. So we go over there to Danny's house and she's apparently waking up from this slumber because whatever kind of weed she had, it had her laid out. She didn't even hear Tony when he came in. So she was asking him, what time did you make it in? He says, after the restaurant. Um, sir, we asked you for a time, okay? So she's asking him questions about how was the dinner, what was said, who said what. He basically told her nothing bad was said about her. Tiffany didn't say anything. So she said she didn't have to go to work till later on, and she started smoking her weed. And Tony acted like he had a problem with that, like, oh, you're smoking again? I'm like, well, she's been smoking this whole time, but you never said anything before. So now all of a sudden, it's a problem, but... I'm sure that'll come back up. So Tony tries to use the traffic as an excuse to hurry up and get out the door. And Danny wants to know, is he going to give her some? 
And he was like, look, I'm already fully dressed, ready for work. And she was like, yeah, but Arama, that has never stopped you before. Now, this man has been trying to hunch Danny all day long at work, getting on my nerves and telling her to stay up, stay up, stay up. And you mean to tell me if you actually made it in her house and she was asleep, you didn't go ease your behind in the bed and spoon up against her so you can get some? Now, I don't know whose face Tony think he's playing in, but first of all, Danny's apartment is no bigger than the matchbox. No shade, but it is what it is. Her bed is damn near to the door. I believe Tony just got there not too long ago got on the couch and tried to make it look like he was sleeping on the couch. Why would his big behind be laid on that little small couch and all cramped up like that? That makes no sense. And then you don't even want to hunch as much as you trying to hunch any other time? Uh-uh. No, sir. And to top it off, you give her the endearing forehead kiss before rushing off. But the way Danny was looking, I believe she has a feeling Something is just not right. So my question to you, Tony, is were you over there hunching Tiffany? Did y'all do something that you weren't supposed to be doing? That's why you feeling guilty? And Danny, I'm going to need you to get your key back because had he not had a key, he wouldn't be able to be getting in and out without your knowledge. So we see Andy getting out of her car when Gary sneaks up on her and she was like, what are you doing here? You should leave. He says, I'm not going anywhere till I get what I want. He shows her the picture of Jordan with the male and the female prostitutes, and she says that they're photoshopped. He says, no, ma'am, that's not what I do. I also have video footage. So Gary tells Andy that he wants her, and she says it'll never happen. So he begs to differ and tells her, well, since you and Penelope working with the FBI, then you should know my dealings with the cartel. So he pretty much just lets Andy know that he knows all about what's going on, that he has her her place bug, and Jordan's. I don't know why he told all of that. But he basically reminded Andy of that $100,000 that he gave Jordan towards his campaign, and he can have it to where Jordan is unalived by the cartel for playing with their money. Andy keeps asking him, what does he want? He says, I told you, silly, I want you. So he pulls out this little teal box, the same exact box that he pulled out the first time he proposed to her. And he says, will you make me the most miserable man in the world and be my wife? She tells him he has lost his everlasting mind. And apparently he has because she tries to walk off and he yanks her back, letting her know if she does not marry him, he will have all videos and photos released of Jordan he will engage with the cartel so he can potentially be unalived. And if all else fails, he will stop at nothing to have Jordan six feet under. So Andy, she agreed to whatever he was talking about, I guess scared for Jordan's life. And he told her the little Hardy Boys act that her and Penelope has going on has to end now or she's going to end up just like his son started smiling and told her, see you at the altar. I can't wait to smell your panties again. And he walks off leaving Andy there shaking in her boots. And that's where the episode ends. Woo child, that dog on Gary Borders, he is so vile. It is time for him to go. It really is. He is off the chain. What did you guys think about Tony sneaking and creeping in the middle of the night? Was he there like he said he was or was he just getting in after staying the night with Tiffany and the kids? Let's talk about it. This episode was written by Courtney Richard. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts were. And as always, you guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.